Hey, welcome back to all you brewers, distillers, hobbyists, uh, or those who just have interest. I'm George. Um, this is going to be the follow-up or a follow-on of the video we did when we wired the PID together. Now, remember, we did the 120-volt PID. Um, we've got that up on the pegboard, and I've cleaned it up a little bit, so uh, you can compare that to the last video. That's at the exact same one in the exact same location. All I did was just clean up the wires and made them a little bit shorter so it's easier to operate with. Now, but what we're going to do is we're going to start to kind of what I call sex it up a little bit, you know, it's kind of increase your cool points and uh, add a few more features to it so that uh, it's got your own personality. Now, rem remember, this is what we're doing. We're taking this and we're going to we're demystifying this so that what we have up here exactly what's in here is exactly what I have on the wall right here but it's kind of spread out so you can see it a whole lot easier so just as a quick review uh, remember what we've got and just ignore this because this is what we're going to add it's called the amp meter uh, we've got the switch the receptacle our solid state relay and our proportional integral derivative controller and it's all wired together and it's working. I've got this one set right now to 128 degrees and it's sensing 131.4. What I've got is I've got that 1500 watt heater element inside a little bucket of water because you don't want to run those dry. If you do, they'll, they'll, they'll fail pretty quick. Um, and then I've also got my uh, temperature probe inside that water as well sensing the temperature. So that's what it's doing. That's, that's, that's where my loop is. And we'll talk a little bit more about loop in just a minute. But here's what we have now. We've got, remember, you got the black hot wire, you got the white neutral wire, and you got the green ground wire. Okay, here's our green ground wire that's coming off of our switch. And I use red to indicate the white so that you'll be able to see it. Here's our red wire off the switch, off, the, or off of our receptacle. And remember, it's the, the larger receptacle, the larger portion is going to be your neutral, and the smaller one, the smaller knife is that's going to be the hot side and that'll be the brass screw and the silver screw silver screw for neutral brass screw for the hot and we've got our solid state relay our ssr and here's the little red dot that indicates the light that comes on every time the ssr operates and here in a few minutes because our temperature is coming down you're going to see this i've got the light hooked up as well as because we're using both top and bottom of this receptacle we didn't isolate it that's we're going to save that for another video uh, it's working its way down now. So we've got pin one and pin two, and that's where the break is. And then we've got our signal. So our signal comes from our PID. We're, gonna, we're not even going to add the PID to this description. Uh, we're going we're to work from here over. So I've got a black wire that comes in to the bottom of the switch. And remember, the switch is separated physically. When it's in the down position, this screw and this screw is separated. When it's in the up position on, these two screws are connected. So I've got power that comes in. Then what we did was we ran the power from the switch. We ran it to pin number one. And we're going to leave that one because that's an absolute necessary one to have. So there's our black wire that goes to pin number one on our solid state relay. Now remember, every time that the, it receives its signal and the light comes on, this connection is made, which is going to energize that receptacle. So we have the break here. When it's energized, it's connected. And so we've got whatever's coming into this pin is going to go out of that pin. And it goes out of that pin. And way, the way we had it wired up without an amp meter was this one goes directly to the screw, the brass screw on the side of that receptacle. But now what we want to do is we want to find out every time that comes on, how many amps are going through that line. That's sort of like the pressure, how, how much force is going through of 120 volts of, of uh, AC, alternating current. How much of that force is going through there? Now remember, you don't need to have an amp meter if you don't want one. It, they're, they're not absolutely necessary. They're just kind of neat to have. You can kind of see what's going on at the same time. Even though the light's going to tell you it's working, your meter is going to tell you how much of it is working. So are you getting 100% of the power? Are you getting 75% of the power? Are you getting a short jolt? What is it What is it that's actually going on inside that circuit? Now to measure that, the only thing you have to measure in a 120 volt circuit is you have to measure the current going through one line. 
So if you measure the current that's going through this one line, and you can do that two ways. One, you can use an amp meter. That's an amp, a clamp. And what the clamp does is the clamp tests, and all I would do is I would just wrap this and hang it. Whoop, oh, there, it turned on. And you can see we're at 12 point, uh, a little bit short of 12 amps. So your PID is putting out enough power in order to heat that heater element. You can hear it going. And our temperature probe is going to sense it. And when it gets back up to 128 degrees, it's going to shut off. So the light's on because I got the light hooked up there as well. And our amp meter should be reading. Let me put it on amps. There we go. Well, now it turned itself off. But so that's one way to check it. You can use an amp clamp. Or you can use the amp meter. But we're only going to check it on one wire. Now, in order to check amps, you got to know what's passing through that wire, not what's at both ends of the wire, which would give you voltage. If you want, if you put a multimeter on the black pin and or the uh, brass pin and the silver pin, it would tell you that's 120 volts. But we want to know how fast that's going through there. So you have to make a break. So here's what we did. This is what an amp meter looks like. An amp meter is a pretty simple device. On the back of it, you've got two lugs. This lug, and you've got this lug. And you want electricity to pass from this one to this one. That's all you want it to do. You want to pass from one to the other, and it makes its, it'll make a connection. It's a, it's a solid connection, but it goes through the meter. And the meter actually measures and passes that electricity at the same time. So what we did was, the, the wire that comes out of number two that goes to our receptacle, we actually jump that down here and plug that into the back of that amp meter on that one terminal. Now on the other terminal, we took another black wire and we ran that black wire up and we plugged that into the brass side of the receptacle. So what happens now is that each time that this is energized and these two pins are connected, that current runs through the meter and then to the switch or to the receptacle instead of directly to the receptacle. So you see how simple that is? We've added an amp meter in the middle of our process. So now each and every time that that comes on and as it cools, that will come back on and this will tell me how many amps are running through that circuit. Now, We've got the 1500 watt, we've got a 1500 watt heater element. And we've done this before. If we divide that by 120 volts, at peak usage, that is at 100% power, it's only going to draw 12.5 amps. We're on a 15 amp circuit, so we're safe. Uh, if we're going to use a 2,000 watt heater element, we do the same math, 2,000 watt divided by 120 will equal 16 point, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 16.6 amps. But in any case, 16 is more than 15, so we would exceed what is capable of running through this, this circuit. We're only, we've got a 15 amp circuit. Uh, if you were on a 20 amp circuit, then you would be then you would be safe, uh, running 16.6 amps. What I am using though is I'm using a beefed up switch and a receptacle that will handle 20 amps, but I'm still on a 15 amp circuit, so it doesn't matter. I could put a 30 amp breaker or a 30 amp receptacle on there. I'm not going to get 30 amps. I'm only providing 15 because in the fuse box it's on a 15 amp circuit, and if we exceed that, it'll blow that fuse or trip that breaker. So keep that in mind. If you're operating this and, and the breaker trips and it just shuts off, go to the breaker box, turn the breaker back on, but try to isolate that one receptacle so that you're using all the power that's provided out of that one receptacle. You don't have like the coffee pot on one. Uh, you got another extension out there and you, you know, you got the refrigerator running off of it. So, you know, it's because as soon as something else comes on, it's, those amps are going to go up and it's going to throw that switch. You don't want that to happen. Now, we've also got something else going on here and a lot of you, I've got a lot of response and a lot of questions about, well, George, I got it set for, in this case, I got it set 128 degrees, and I'm still at 131.7.6. It's going back down. And what they'll say is, well, I 
turn on my PID and I've got it working and it, it, it hits that temperature and it just keeps going. Well, let me explain to you what's going on. If you're doing like I'm doing now, and what I've got here is I've got, I've just got a pot of water. I've got a heater element stuck in here. And I've got my probe sitting here sensing and testing the water. So now keep this in mind, this is just a small volume. When this starts to heat up, it's going to be the hottest all the way around this heater element and that heat's going to start to dissipate and move across this volume of water. And then that heat probe is going to pick it up. Well, there's a lag in that. So that heat probe is going to start to pick it up, but that water here is now going to be probably 140 degrees, 150 degrees because the PID is saying heat it up, heat it up, heat it up because it's just not there yet. So that lag once that temperature reaches my set value of 128 in this particular case, the PID is going to turn off that heater element. That heater element is going to stop heating, but you've got all that mass on this side of that pot. Even if you put your probe here, you're going to have the same issue. You've got all that mass that's going to be hot, and you're going to have a differential in temperature inside that volume. So that's going to have to settle itself out and balance. Over a period of time, it'll balance itself out. It just takes a while. So what will happen is, is that your temperatures unintentionally, when you first turn it on, if you're using an open system, and that's what this is, is an open system. It's a closed loop, but it's an open system. What will happen is, there's your set value, and this is your temperature over time. You're going to go spike, and then it'll drop back down, and then it'll spike and drop back down and over a period of time it'll balance itself out but that's because you've got this volume that that the transfer of that temperature across that medium which is the water itself might much much different if you put it into a still if you've got a still and then you've got a column and you have a heater element here and you put your probe inside here. Now, all this heated liquid, this mass gets heated and the steam starts to rise and that's what you're measuring. And you're measuring the temperature of that steam as it's produced. There's not that much more of a lag because you're gonna get the full value of that heat transfer that takes place that's gonna to start to rise. At the very beginning, your PID is gonna stop and the temperature is going to continue to rise and it's going to start to drop back down. Then that PID is going to come back on and it's going to go back off. Then it's going to use its integral and derivative process to provide the proportional control to maintain a steady temperature that you set in your set value. Now, I kind of hope that makes sense. That's why when you originally turn it on, yeah, your temperature will normally spike above your set value until your system balances out. Now, this would be known as a closed loop, but also a closed system for this particular purpose because it's not open. It's not open to the environment, and you're not measuring at the same place that you're trying to heat. Kind of makes sense? Yeah, just, just follow that through a little while. But give, us, give, give yourself some time. Be, be patient. This is about ready to come back on. And we'll be able to tell it because it's down at 127.1, boom, zero, one. It keeps bouncing back and forth, but we'll give it some time. But that's all I have for you today. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you shoot us an email, like us on Facebook, do it, it came back on, do all that other good stuff because we're here to serve you. Happy distilling.